On this Instatapes for the third annual Monte Carlo Anti-Aging Conference is Dr. Walter Perpoli of Italy speaking on resetting the pineal clock, clinical results with melatonin. Now we join Dr. Perpoli. Ladies and gentlemen, I am extremely grateful to the organizer, all of them, for inviting me again. I was here last year to the third Monte Carlo Stromboli uh, uh, conference. I am delighted because I like very much the, the title, the application of anti-aging medicine. Because we are talking a lot about theories, we are talking a lot about wonderful experiments, but it's high time to talk about suffering people, aging people, which concerns also ourselves. So after uh, 40 years with mice, I now focused on men. Being a medical doctor, I decided after patiently waiting for 40 years in the laboratory to see the response of my mice, which have been my favorite mates companions for the last 40 years. Two years ago, I decided to, to become a doctor again because there is no time to wait further after 40 years provided you doubt about your own theories on aging. So in the doubt, I decided to reverse to, uh, to humans because I was curious to see if my so-called discoveries, which is a very bad word for defining observation on natural miracles, would be true. So uh, you will see that this, this conference, <coughs> compared to the conference one year ago, is very different simply because I could uh, observe for one year longer the, the effect of uh, my therape therapeutic application in humans. So the, therefore, uh, uh, I urge you, or I rather kindly ask you, to go through uh, the, um, the, the, the observation which I've anticipated this stage of research which is now focused on applying this principle to pathologies linked to humans or even to uh, at least partially delaying or reversing aging in humans, which is our main interest, I suppose. Therefore, I like uh, the title of this conference, The Application of Anti-Aging Medicine. What can we do now on our aging? And how, what can we do now on uh, <coughs> on the possibility to cure uh, so-called incurable diseases and also to reverse our, our own aging. This was a paper in 94 on the Proceeding National Academy of Science, which announced to the world, I hoped, but I was, I was <laughs> wrong, that uh, there is a clock in the pineal gland uh, which precisely scan the times of life and death in our brain and tell us exactly when we have to age and also when we have to die. After the appearance of this uh, important article and the third Stromboli conference, which you saw as the first slide, uh, I thought that uh, the whole uh, international scientific community would uh, at least uh, watch this result and try to replicate, but this was not the case. Anyhow, I, I ask you kindly to read these books have been published in 17 languages simply for one reason. I cannot go through the old story every time. So now, as I told you, I like to see the facts of this so-called discovery to the patient. Therefore, there is no time to waste just telling again and again for several years that there is a clock in the pineal gland, what is melatonin, what can we do now for mel with melatonin, what is the meaning of melatonin. I'm not a melatonin man, eventually, if you allow me, I'm a pineal man, <laughs> because the key for understanding aging or not aging stays, is located in the pineal complex. The pineal complex, you will see, is uh, something astonishing. So the book has been published so because if uh, uh, you uh, are not aware of all the story, it would be impossible to, to illustrate to you what I'm doing now in humans, simply because I have to, I should go through again the story. 
this is a logo of the Stromboli conference. There will be a fourth Stromboli conference in June next year, where uh, we will bring uh, extremely important new results. Also, a big problem now is, uh, as uh, I was discussing with Phil yesterday, is a really there is a gigantic gap widening every day impressively because between what we know and we could do now and the scientific community and the medical doctor and the health authorities, I mean, they are really uh, refractory to anything which may cast doubt on the sanity of chemical products. Therefore, uh, I would accept anything from anybody uh, uh, but not taking drugs, obviously, because they be, will become totally unnecessary. So the Stromboli conference, I think, will be a very important event. I will go through my usual series of slides showing the story, because the story started <coughs> in 85, in uh, the late 70s, when uh, we exposed mice in the laboratory to permanent lighting. You can imagine to be permanently under light since you are born and you will never see darkness. And I am not going to tell you here why we did this, because it would be impossible. Just please kindly read the book, the first book, because the second book is, will be published worldwide this year, end of this year, beginning next year, which will be a book describing what happened after the first, and then there will be a third one. So we are in great hurry to, uh, to apply the principle to the therapy of diseases. So this was uh, exposing uh, mice to permanent light. They have accelerated aging. You break down the regulatory system in the pineal gland in the brain. You uh, alter the whole cyclicity of a hormone combined together and you destroy the immunity as a disaster. So the maintenance of day-night uh, periodicity, which is linked to the hormonal periodicity, is absolutely fundamental for maintaining basic health immunological uh, surveillance against cancer, against whatever you say. You want to say, you see the periodicity, if you break this, message, basic message of dark, darkness and light, you break the immune system, you prevent the development of the immune system, you prevent hormonal cyclicity, which is basic for maintaining of health. And you will see how this is true on our clinical trial on perimenopausal women. Therefore, this was published in 1980 in the United States, a big book, and is still perfectly valid. It was an anticipation of what happened. So by keeping the mice a permanent light, you destroy their, their uh, uh, capacity for maintaining health. So it means that the basic principle is maintenance of day-night cyclicity of, of this regulatory mechanism which we have here in the brain will are responsible, will maintain your own health and will prevent diseases. Because to my view, it's impossible to imagine the alteration of hormonal cyclicity and, uh, and uh, immunological cyclicity if you are maintaining your normal pineal function, which is connected, of course, with all the rest of the brain. I, when I talk about pineal, I mean all connection with hypothesis, with hypothalamus, with, uh, with the gonads, and so on. You see the pineal gland. Really, I have to hurry if we want to talk, discuss, and then question from you concerning diseases. Uh, you see the intricate connection between the neuroendocrine, the immune system, the pineal gland, hypoxia, and so on. Sorry, but I have to speed up. This is a different pineal glands in the different animal. Nature is given to ev every species its own uh, uh, regulatory system in the pineal complex in order to comply with the needs of each species, which is different. Uh, of course, like the sheep, they are seasonal reproductive animals. We are not seasonal, and so on and so on. This is a beautiful story which you can read on the book. And of course, it's, uh, the pathway to melatonin, I have to tell you immediately that what we do, in fact, when we take melatonin in the evening, just before at the bedtime, we simply prevent 
the uh, conversion from serotonin, which is a main, uh, main uh, uh, neurotransmitter in the brain, to melatonin. What happens? You will get up in the morning in a good mood because serotonin is very fundamental for, uh, for, uh, for the mood, <laughs> for the mood. Depressed people have very low level. So simultaneously, you will put your pineal gland to rest. The pineal gland will produce other molecules, which are the true molecules behind the story of the melatonin, which I'm not going to discuss today. By God's sake, it would be impossible. This is why I'm writing books, because I cannot anticipate things in that way. So uh, melatonin is simply protecting the pineal from aging. The pineal will feel fit, young, juvenile, will produce new molecules. Other molecules, which I am applying now to my patients, but it's high time to tell the truth, but it is not time to tell it because simply there is no audience for it. Uh, so the best audience at the present time are my patients. So you see, by caving melatonin in the evening, you prevent uh, uh, serotonin to be transformed to uh, melatonin by two enzymatic steps, which are quite complicated. And what is that doing the pineal gland in the night? It's sleeping, it's resting, it's not working. And this is as simple as that. Isn't logic? You see the model which have uh, uh, brought me to this uh, observation about the importance of the aging clock in the brain, scanning the times of growth, of fertility, of aging, and also of death, where this intervention, which you can read in the book, and you see the historical experiment on uh, <coughs> aging, uh, uh, life prolongation in, uh, in mice in 85, very significant prolongation. This story, you know, I, I cannot make it longer, really. You can read, uh, you can read in the book. Uh, you can read it, because we really don't have much time. This time I'm in a hurry because I would have to have many questions, because this is fundamental to me. Your question, your curiosity must be satisfied as much as possible, because uh, we are now at the clinical level. You see the, the thyroid gland of an old mouse, the thyroid gland of a melatonin-treated mouse, or transplanted with a young pioneer, the trophic thymus is a center of, of cell-mediated immunity of a very old mouse, and when you take melatonin, your thymus will uh, be <laughs> proliferating again, and your T cell, you will get no sick uh, dis uh, viral disease, or you will recover very quickly. Uh, these are all effects of melatonin. The breakthrough was a transplantation of pineal gland from young animal to old animals. This you see the transplanted young pineal, because the question was, is it melatonin producing this effect uh, uh, taken in the evening, or is it something in the pineal gland itself? And silly scientists like me obviously think of obvious uh, uh, question always too late, so you, but you make late the experiment you should have done before. So I transplanted the pineal and we had a wonderful effect in life prolongation, which uh, not in this graph, but in many other experiments have been shown to be to prolong life of mice at least double the time where you, when you, uh, then when you inject melatonin, therefore you, you give melatonin in the night. Therefore, I mean, obviously, the secret of life and death, of growing, of disease, is in pioneer complex, maintaining your hormonal cyclicity. The hormonal cyclicity, not how much hormone we produce, the cyclicity, the integration between them, what I call the spider web, where the web, the spider is uh, the pineal gland, and the web is a whole, the network of hormonal network interaction, which uh, must be maintained in its integrity. And we can maintain the hormonal synchronization integrity by the, using this system. Then there was a famous, let me <laughs> use this term, uh, cross-transplantation experiment where uh, <laughs> The, the grandfather and the nephew look the same. We transplant, as you can read in the book, the pineal gland from a very old mouse to a young mouse. One year difference, which corresponded to uh, 30, 40 years. Or you can say father, ch child, but I would say grandfather, grandson. 
And after one year, the, the mouse transplanted with a young pineal from the, from the, the nephew, <laughs> was a, a grandchild, was, uh, was, uh, looked exactly like uh, the grandfather, and the grandfather looked like his grandchild. This experiment can be repeated by anybody, is welcome. But believe me, the uh, scientific community did not really uh, want to repeat this experiment to my great, great astonishment. This is why I revert now to patients. Now, you can see, because actually I am a medical doctor, I have the right to sign a prescription. I am authorized uh, to heal or kill people without any problem, because uh, this is a uh, uh, the system, I mean, if I'm a good doctor, I can help. If I'm a bad doctor, I cannot help. No, let me see what happens. So you see it prevents to a large extent melatonin administration, uh, the uh, development of uh, these terrible viral diseases. That is why I, we made an interesting experiment uh, in, in Kenya on AIDS patients. And this is the last paper I published on the journal Anti-Aging Medicine which was graciously accepted by Dr. Fossel, which you have seen the speaker before me, uh, making very nice comment in, uh, uh, in that issue because he said, this is not a credible experiment, which Per Paulis presents, it's true. I couldn't believe myself. It is impossible to believe that this experiment is true, uh, that you take the, the pineal gland. If a, a pineal gland is a key for the clock, telling you exactly when you have to grow, when you have to reproduce, when you have to age, and also when you have to die, then as this is a demonstration. And obviously, I have now many other in, in, interesting observations in uh, humans. So you see that uh, if, you trans if you take a normal mouse, young mouse, uh, four months, three, four months, uh, corresponding to the age of uh, 20 years old man, and you take the, the pineal gland from a very, very old mouse, the grandfather, yeah? And you take it, and he, the child has his own the child, a young man, a woman, has his own pineal gland. He's young, he's active, he's normal. And you, and you make this stupid experiment, because actually you cannot expect anything from this experiment. But I had a suspicion that in, there may be something which escapes completely our understanding. We are biologically so naive. We have a, such a, a restricted view of all what is going on if, in our small cage, around our cage in which we are stuck, and we can't see be, 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 be beyond it, that anything can happen. And in fact, it was a great, a great surprise because what happened? If you take a, a, a young mouse and you take a very old mouse, 22 months old is a very old mouse, and you take his pineal and you transplant the pineal into the young, innocent uh, grandchild, okay? But believe me, it's something incredible because I cannot understand. And then, what have? Accelerated aging, as if uh, the oh, very old pineal taken and disconnected from the nerves, from, the, from, from anything which reasonable, reasonably would make it functioning, except vascularization. But there are no other, other energy mechanisms, there is no connection. So you would think this simple is like a dot, a dot at the end of a sentence. You transplant into a whole animal, what can you expect? Accelerated aging. As unbelievable as it may seem, it is so. You see accelerated aging. Uh, I couldn't believe it, of course, and I do believe that Dr. Fosse still cannot believe it, in spite of the publish, but this is why I challenge anybody to repeat the experiment. I, I couldn't believe it, and therefore I repeated the experiment many times. These experiments, you know, are not replicated in most part of the world, or now somebody starts, simply because it takes years. You have to wait several years to conclude this kind of experiment. And obviously, I'm not only studying the, the age span, the lifespan and the longevity, we are also taking blood to measure this and that, thyroid function, hormonal function, immunological function, in order to evaluate if there are the arrangements in the course of accelerated aging. And you see, 
inevitably, it is inevitably, if you transplant a very old pineal to a young mouse, you have accelerated aging. Well, I could have gone 20 or more years to do this kind of experiment, but I was aware there is no time to waste. If this principle are true, we have already molecules, we have vectors, we have elements which can uh, induce me to say, okay, uh, friends who are urging me to do something more, uh, more interesting than in mice, oh, if you are true, apply to humans, and then about, uh, in 95, I started already to take care of a few patients who were uh, asking me, cancer patient, any kind of patients, and I took care of about uh, free of charge, just for scientific curiosity, about 30 of them, and they came to Switzerland, they went to a clinic, and they started applying my mysterious <coughs> reconstitution of prevention uh, capacity, which looked like black magic, I don't know, to the, to the modern doctor, <laughs> but they were based on a lot of work. So I started, of course, not thinking only of melatonin, because at that time I, I had already uh, um, found other molecules, very interesting uh, natural molecules, which are ubiquitous in nature, which populate our body and make chemistry totally unnecessary, and they <laughs> are the cocoa endogenous molecule, which in nature have been invented billions of years ago, and they are ubiquitous in nature, they are extremely active biologically, and they, we have only to identify them and to apply them in the right moment, the right moment, the right pathology, the right time, the biology of life. This is a biology of life, which is, of course, built up in the planetary system, uh, inducing, producing, creating this beautiful variability. So I uh, started to take care of patients. Uh, uh, this is how to prevent tumors by removing the pineal gland in mice, which uh, produce uh, nature, uh, are, uh, are killed by all by uh, uh, spontaneous tumors and they have alteration of this certain regulation, and therefore they, huh. uh, Okay, then I started uh, <coughs> taking care of patients. How did I do it? Uh, in my own uh, curious attitude to medicine, I just created so-called kits. I thought, well, if you want to prevent aging, if you want to cure diseases, what has led to the generation of cancer, autoimmune diseases, which are uh, ter terrible and they cannot be cured. If you think only of Parkinson, uh, autoimmune diseases, lupus, uh, 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 multiple sclerosis, and also Alzheimer, there are uh, thousands of autoimmune diseases with different names, but the same etiology, the same origin. They are autoimmune. Some factor is activating autoimmune reactivity, and then it's progression. There is progression and you are progressively destroyed. Cancer, autoimmune diseases, arteriosclerosis, so cardiovascular diseases, and several others. So there was a whole collection in my first 30 patients. But thanks to the, the fact that the scientific community did not apparently take care of anything, what we were doing, and thanks to the fact that uh, my individualistic attitude to science forced me to do that, I, uh, in collaboration with a group in Rome, we decided, Italian way, to uh, cut it short and make the work ourselves. Well, the idea was, what is better to show that circadian cyclicity and uh, hormonal cyclicity is uh, is basic for life or for maintaining health. Of course, the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle is a program. If you allow me, I think nobody would doubt there is a program for the woman which starts at puberty, uh, then is prolonged uh, about 20, 30 years, 40. And then suddenly some message comes from the brain and tells the woman now you're going to renounce your fertility, you sit down, and now you become a grandmother, and then, okay, take care of the grandchildren. You are not anymore fertile. You are a woman, but half woman. Okay. But this is a personal decision. 
So we took, uh, in Rome, we made a double-blind clinical test, uh, placebo-controlled according to the rules. Even a group came to, for, to, to Rome from the United States, very generous, and we sent samples of saliva of all women before initiating the experiment, and we hired about 150 women. And of course, you know how difficult it is to handle with women at that age. <laughs> Therefore, <laughs> after, after all, Italian women, women are very capricious around Rome, you know? But I mean, the habits were about, about the same. At the end, we were, there were 72 left who were, did, they, they, they did their own work because it was not easy, you know? They had to go to the hospital, take blood, take melatonin, take uh, uh, saliva in the night, to send then was sent to the state, they made the radio immune assay. So we did according to the rule. Double blind, the women were not affected by pathology, didn't smoke, didn't take drugs. So at the end, however, it was an incredibly difficult story because to make such a clinical trial in Italy, in addition in Rome, around Rome, in Velletri, with Dr. Giulio Bellipani, who is a wonderful doctor and gynecologist and surgeon, but we did it, we succeeded it, and it was worse than the whole effort. In spite of it, was, <laughs> it was haunted by I don't know how many problems, by, because of different uh, practical problems, also financial character, you can imagine it's very expensive and so we had no, no support really, because uh, this kind of work is not supported by the hormone producer, you can imagine. <laughs> so, uh, but what I learned from this is also not what uh, the, was the answer for the women, which was very clear, and I'm following many of them now, but uh, that it is po impossible to bring to the scientific community and to the world uh, this kind of work, because there was a violent opposition by all the editorial boards of the journals, and I have a list of them, and I could show you, if you come to me, I will show you unbelievable opposition to the publication of that work. You know, to the extreme <laughs> level, <laughs> there was a journal in the United States that kept me waiting for one year with a sort of story, you have to do this, we did, you have to do this, you do it. I have to do it, I will do it, okay. And so, uh, at the end, the paper was improved, of course, that. And the, the editor said, sorry, we have no space in the journal. And I think if it's a really unbelievable, I leave it to you. Because obviously you know very well the, the business in the market of hormones for women, yeah? You can guess. So you see that women, when they age, they progressively, the, their uh, gland, their ovaries become refractory to gonadotropins from the hypophysis. Therefore, the body doesn't want to age. They want to, to go on ovulating. There are about 200,000 over in the ovaries of a woman, but only two, three thousand get to maturation in the course of a fertility uh, life of a woman, simply because there is a program. It is a program which tells, start from the brain and tells the woman, now you are going to stop ovulating. But the women, the body is also some compensatory mechanism and tries to vicariate this uh, by uh, by producing more gonadotropins. Women from 42 to 62, you see, increasingly produce more gonadotropin to, to, uh, to, to, to induce, try to induce their ovaries to produce, to, to go on producing eggs. And uh, this is not uh, my invention, this is simply shown in the literature. This is an obvious fact of life that women are going to stop ovulating, the gonadotropins are increasing at later age. But the first uh, great uh, surprise was that, uh, of course, we gave, uh, excuse me, because we gave melatonin, of course, to half of the women, and melatonin uh, placebo to half of the women. Nobody knew, so there was no key. At the end, was open the key. Who was taking melatonin, who was not taking melatonin? Of course, this I should have said before. Obviously, a double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trial strictly done according to the rules of the scientific community. And then, when we, you give in women, for the, the, the test, the say, the studies uh, lasted for six months. 
So we could see already in the course of these four, six months, I tell you before, because generally I forget to tell this most important observation, <laughs> that uh, many women in the course of six months, from the age of 42 to 62, uh, during the strict uh, time of six months, many women who had premenopausal troubles, uh, neurovegetative trouble, of course, I don't talk about them, but just uh, uh, irregularity in the menstruation, in the cycle, too short, too long, uh, or no cycle at all, or just uh, for uh, even one woman uh, had, uh, had uh, it was a full menopause since uh, uh, almost four years. And this was not my observation, because there is a menopause sanctuary in that clinic near Rome, and the Dr. Bellipani check if it is some problem with dysmenorrhea or with uh, some hemorrhage or is really menstruation. Okay, a large number of women, seven of them, only of the 40, uh, around 40, 35 uh, mm, uh, being treated with melatonin who had severe uh, alteration of menstrual cycle, I want to say. Some were totally uh, without any, uh, already menopause, full menopause, other well in the between, and other started to have irregularity, they resumed total normal cycle without any problem. And some of them long after cessation of menstruation. And obvious, it, why is obvious? I had already shown in a paper with Bianca Marchetti with rats that if you take uh, melatonin or if you transplant the pineal, in all the uh, uh, rats, uh, you can restore the brain, even in the, the side of the brain in the hypothalamus, where there are sitting releasing factor for gonadotropins. This is molecular pharmacology. You can show the melatonin, uh, as surprising as it may seem, uh, is uh, by itself, uh, by protecting the pineal, restoring the receptor for gonadotropins in the hypothalamus, the hippocampus. You can imagine, of course, then is what obviously uh, uh, the, the fact that I was not surprised by the outcome of this clinical trial, but you see, if you give melatonin in women for six months from 42 for 60, uh, for during night time in the evening, and you are not going to see na anything. This is a placebo control group. But as we had seen in the rats with Bianca Marchetti, even in the, their hippocampus and the releasing factor for gonadotropin, if you give melatonin to women between 40, 42 and 62, you see this. You see true documented reacquisition of juvenile hormonal function in the hypothesis. Their hypothesis within six months, can you imagine a short, I become sensitive to the feedback from the ovaries and there is no need anymore to produce so much gonadotropins because simply the ovaries become more receptive and in fact most of them reacquire normal uh, menstruation, normal cyclicity. And the something which tells you this picture is that the, the earlier you, you start in taking melatonin, this was a very important message from this pilot study, because if we would have used only women of 50 or 55, it wouldn't be possible. The earlier you start to prevent it, the longer you maintain your uh, juvenility and your menstruation here, oh, it is obvious that any woman will want to decide about their own fertility. I don't object. This is a fact of life that if you want to maintain your juvenility of your hormonal function, you must start for a woman around 40, not, not after. Because if you start after, there will be a more obvious, more inertia resistance from the system to react to the restoration of juvenile hormonal function. And of course, I told you, Many of these women required cyclicity. What was <coughs> absolutely astounding to me, I was amazed, because watching in the literature, I thought there must be such, such an important information. It was not, there was nothing. I mean, 
Obviously, I was surprised. And this tells you how ignorant, how naive we are in predicting extraordinary discoveries when we ignore so basic biological function. Uh, we found uh, the women were like, you know, taking melatonin. They were reborn, newborn, full of energy. In the morning, they got up from bed. You know, I see them now because I'm taking care of many women between, at that age between uh, 35 and 60 and so on. So I'm, I'm carefully making this therapeutic experiment now. And uh, <laughs> they changed their life because obviously you understand thyroid function was restored because it is a deficiency in the hypothesis of the, in the, in the thyroid gland of most women, which is not revealed even by laboratory tests. The data evaluating thyroid function when you go to the doctor, they are completely false. They don't correspond to the truth because if you have a TSH around five or four, you are sick, you are hypothyroid, you are weak in the morning, you are depressed, you have no energy, your fuel is missing in your body. And therefore we found, to our great astonishment, and I saw, I, I made a screen in the literature, ca that uh, during the menopause, uh, the thyroid function of women is uh, largely uh, depressed uh, in most women, and also the synthesis of T3, which is an active hormone in the thyroid, being converted for T4 in the liver. And you may not know that when you, uh, the, the thyroid hormone uh, is thyroidothyronine, T3, with three atoms of iodine. And uh, T4, you can take as much as you want, but if you are is not converted to T3, you will be hypothyroid if you charge your body, because when you age, your liver will be progressively unable to convert T4 to T3. In addition, there is interesting work published showing that melatonin by itself will help the conversion in the liver of T4 to T3. I'm not talking about the mechanism. Therefore, you can see that I didn't show you the whole big tables because it would be Impossible. This is a summarizing. Restores melatonin within six months, juvenile thyroid function in women for this age. The effect, and look at that, is much more pronounced in the women which, when uh, their, their melatonin was measured in the saliva, have low night level of melatonin. It means that the the, the signal in the, in the, thi in the uh, pineal gland showing that when you are young and juvenile, you have an active pineal gland giving this night signal, that when the signal is declining, is, uh, gives you the signal of aging. Therefore, the same, uh, it is uh, the effect of melatonin is prona more pronounced in restoring thyroid function is women with night level of melatonin. So this was a, a great, great satisfaction. I still have 10 minutes. And I think I want to, to challenge you, to challenge you because I came here not to tell the usual story. I came here for the application of anti-aging. I am, excuse me, the word fed up with scientific discussion. I'm a doctor. I want to apply the principle. Now I'm doing it in the last two years. Because after my uh, experiment in uh, 95, where I saw my <laughs> patient coming, asking me, please help me, I was forced then in, uh, in the year 2000, exactly 40 years after I became a doctor, to, uh, to apply the principle. What are you waiting for? You have the possibility, you have the means, you have the ideas, you, you, you have to do it because it, you can take, you can wait for a century uh, for the scientific community, the patent offices, and the uh, health authorities uh, to 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 accept. Why why do you care about it? You just are a doctor from the pa from the molecule to the patient directly, bypassing all the, the hurdles, bypassing all the horrible system, trying uh, entrenched in their own uh, safety and uh, money. Uh, <laughs> organization who are not interested to this kind of medicine. 
which totally refuses drugs. Chemicals are foreign to our bodies, chemicals are our enemies. Obviously, I would say by the Sulfamidica, obviously, we need some antibiotic. We need, for emergency situations, certain chemicals. But to, to think of curing uh, diseases with chemical is a folly, is totally madness. So I believe that this is the answer. So practically, mm, I, uh, I will go short time, therefore I will jump over it. This is that was overall uh, uh, my concept about how restoring uh, uh, hormonal synchronicity, how restoring cyclicity, uh, this blessed cyclicity which we have in the juvenile time, who, how to maintain it, and therefore I, uh, may, I will make for you <laughs> this summary. Ergo, therefore, resetting juvenile hormonal cyclicity uh, by pineal protection resulting to maintenance of health and postponement of aging. Also, the death signal can be monitored and inverted. Have you seen the strange experiment where the, old, old, the very old pioneer was, was accelerating the aging of very young mice? This is a death signal, which has nothing to do with aging. This is something uh, biological expressed in our genome, which then, via these messages, and have you seen, they are dominant messages to make us age and make us die. Diseases simply express alteration of central neuroimmunomodulation. Oh, the big word, neuroimmunomodulation, what is it? Neuroimmunomodulation is a central control of immunity, central control of cyclicity. And we invented this because I was working in this field for 30 years. And still there is a big international society of neuroimmunomodulation. So diseases, age and death are separate entities. They are apparently linked together, but they are a part of the program in the pineal gland, nothing mysterious. And then I started being, uh, uh, working on pathologies. So two years ago, I have still five minutes, the, the yellow light is not yet there, uh, I, I started taking care of patients. So, but my is not, uh, 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 I mean, say, I'm not a doctor hiring patient. I am a doctor working with patients as I work with my mice. Only to work with patients is by far easier because you can pay questions, they tell you, they telephone, and so I organized in Italy a group where I can see patients regularly because group Italy is my native country and I'm a doctor from Milano. So uh, I, go, I visit, uh, I go to clinics in Rome, in the Marche region near Milano, where from time to time I see my patient. I have organized a kind of <laughs> um, homemade kit. I use a kind of association of different molecules. Some of them I call decorations. Some uh, of them I call uh, I call the real active agents, and of course I include melatonin, and in particular a very, very special brand which I use because I created myself the association based on melatonin, zinc, and selenium, which is a biological bomb. It is uh, an unbelievable effective, and of course I will use it in my patient without no, with no exception. And I monitor the health of the patient by simple blood test at the beginning, and then I have 10 chronolite kits which I use for my patient. Um, so you see, that without any intervention of anybody, there is a pharmacist in Italy, a very serious pharmacist with a Galenic laboratory, absolutely einwandfrei, <coughs> what the German would say, which uh, uh, this laboratory is preparing for me the kits. I say, kit number one, give it a prescription, go to the, uh, I mean, he can go whenever he wants, but I, I, I have trust on that, I don't take money from him, but I trust him from that laboratory, and they go and take it for two, one month, two months, and then they ask me later. So I am now, in the last two years, uh, uh, treating all sorts of diseases, you can imagine. I, I prefer to skip over cancer, simply because <laughs> this is something uh, difficult <laughs> to manage because uh, cancer therapy, as you know, <laughs> is totally in the hand of the oncologists. 
and the oncologist apply different principles. I opposite, totally opposite to the oncology views, obviously, uh, because in my view they are non-scientific, but I use my method. But cancer is something we may talk next year or in the next 20 years, doesn't matter. It's a basic principle which is, uh, in my view, winning the winning hole. The basic principle in all my 10 kits, chronolife, which apply to multiple sclerosis, Parkinson, uh, uh, mortal devastating neurodegenerative autoimmune diseases. I've been working for 20 years in immu immunology. So I already generated my principle for restoring immunity in autoimmune diseases like, I don't know, partly Alzheimer, multiple sclerosis, lupus, uh, uh, Hashimoto, a number of them, and I apply the principle for restoring health, you have to restore the integrity of the central clock, regulating your juvenile system, because if you develop diseases, there is going something wrong in your own immunity, in your own capacity to control your own cells, aging itself. The aging itself is a loss of your own identity. You mount antibodies against your own body. And autoimmune diseases are a huge number with different names. Cancer is a loss of the capacity to control, as Michael Fawcett said, the cells which we carry with us. And therefore, obviously, maintaining immunological integrity, which is piloted by the pi pi pineal gland and the neuroendocrine system, is impossible to imagine that you develop autoimmune diseases and cancer. Concerning arteriosclerosis, this is about the same story. So practically, I have accepted several hundred patients, which in the last two years I am now uh, uh, taking care of. And uh, doesn't change. Ah. Uh, I just make a list for you, not because if we should entertain us on all of them, it would be impossible. But this will evoke in you some anxiety and say, Pierre Pauli said he can take care of this disease, he, ma he is mad. I think uh, nobody could believe it, but I believe it. I can show you the incredible reversal of all these diseases to the point uh, that uh, the gap, as uh, Phil said, is widening every day. It is a tragic situation where I could tell you many more interesting stories, but I will not do it. I will not do it until the moment when uh, <laughs> there will be the possibility <laughs> to be straight. What is happening to this is not going on. OK, just a list of diseases I've taken care of. And for each of them, I have patients. I have been following. They are curing. I love them. They love me. We are trying to collaborate to give an answer. I have an answer in about one year because I want to be cure, uh, scientific, I want to replicate, I want to make data. At that moment, I will start publishing because if I start now, uh, osteoporosis is a normal consequence of hormonal derangement in women. You simply take melatonin in the evening and I bet you anything that you can see progressive restoration of your bone density. And you can document it with a mock. You can do it. It's very simple. And also concerning all other pathology, you take blood from your doctor, and then you check. And you see within six months, one year, what is going well and going bad, or if there was some kind of worsening. And, I, and all this uh, metabolic syndrome X is uh, typical of uh, men, aging men. You see perfectly that is hypercholesterol, what is this? It is a central hormonal alteration of hormone regulation. It's as simple as that. Like the menopause is a derangement of hormonal regulation in women. In men, the typical man with the belly, with the uh, 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 fat in his, uh, I mean, uh, hyperlipidemia, and of course, uh, the typical uh, uh, Fatty belly, you know this, uh, 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 you see typical of, uh, you, you will see this, on the thrombocytopenia because of this uh, melatonin and also, which is a part of course of my kids, uh, 
is uh, very potent in the restoring uh, the, the proliferation of megakaryocytes, and, and so it's quite uh, suitable to, to improve greatly or even to, to heal uh, thrombocytopenia. And I've been working, of course, in this field for many years, and I have a big project in the United States on bone marrow transplantation in Seattle. Maybe we will have once a possibility to discuss about this. Of course, uh, if you want to restore the function of the bone marrow at the central level, bone marrow is a huge amount of tissue. You have simply to restore it by uh, acting centrally, not peripherally. So I and retina disease, they were making a bit in China. Just to finish the list is an endless list. Some are pathologies are even missing. Uh, I'm sorry that I couldn't possibly uh, cancer. I couldn't possibly uh, uh, leave you time for the question because I see that I was a bad boy and I could. I was talking too much as usual. My wife will punish me. Here, sitting, say you are always the same chatterbox, and so on. Enhanced tissue regeneration surgery, and that is why I was winning. I think because uh, I, no, I not only I drink wine, but I also use my poor mice, uh, my companion in vivo, in vivo work, gave me the answer. And uh, these are neuromonomodulation friends, which uh, already a ago, uh, where we started all the story of integrative medicine. And this is me going slowly but stammer forward. And nobody is going to stop me because I have a very strong uh, turtle under me, slowly but uh, long life animal, you know, the emblem. And then it's uh, picked to saying that you have always to doubt about what you believe. And this has been always my mentor, Epictetus. And then uh, the fourth Stromboli conference on aging cancer will be a great surprise. You see how you will arrive and how you will live. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>